Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the channel formerly known as Break the Twitch, now known as my name, Anthony Angaro. Let's talk about movement, specifically minimalist, maybe mindful movement. First, I need to show you this. Look at this dog. I just gave Rocky a haircut yesterday. Check out this before and after. So I would say that my relationship with fitness is, it's complicated. For most of my adult life, my relationship to exercise and fitness has been complicated because I've either been working out very intensely or not working out very intensely. Meaning I would be going to the gym five, six days a week, working out very consistently, eating well for months and months or even a year, year and a half, two years at a time. And then I would not, something would happen in the most recent example, the pandemic hit and the gym closed and my six day a week workout habit and routine slowly but surely just kind of fell apart. And here we are today. This on off pattern, which also happens to correlate with my weight and my fitness level, has happened about five times since my early 20s, where I've been in very good shape and very lean, and then slowly but surely, through stress and all kinds of other stuff, sort of put back on the weight and then, I don't know, just not really take care of myself as well. I've been reflecting on this pattern that I've seen through most of my adult life, and one of the things that really keeps coming up for me when I think about it is that none of it, either not working out at all or working out really intensely for long periods of time, neither of those approaches were very self-compassionate. I was way too intense with pushing for progress, trying to lift more and more and push myself probably beyond what was healthy. And then when not working out, obviously that's not healthy either. That's not a good way to take care of myself. And so what I've been looking for recently as I've reflected through a lot of this through therapy and, and other work that's been super helpful to me is how can I show up in a way that I don't have to like egg myself on or, or push myself or really pressure myself to do a very intense routine and be going to a gym six days a week etc cetera, etc cetera, so that I don't burn out and I can have fun taking care of myself and staying healthy. Over the last six months or so I've been exploring different modalities of movement like yoga and now specifically rope flow which is what this video is about. I'd love to tell you more about it, what I've discovered, what I've been doing, and the pros and cons of rope flow as a minimalist mindful movement modality in just a second. But right now, I'd love to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare, of course, is an online learning community for creative and curious people. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a year of learning, connection, and growth through a very creative community. If you have a specific skill you'd like to learn, Skillshare is an amazing place to start. I paid for an annual membership to Skillshare myself because I love everything they have to offer. It is specifically curated for learning with no distractions or advertisements, and it just pretty much has everything. Thankfully, my cacti seedlings are thriving and surviving thanks to this class that I took about succulent and cacti care. And I haven't taken it yet, but as soon as I'm ready to start illustrating these things, there's a course for that too. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description box or use my code BREAKTHETWITCH will get a free one month trial to Skillshare. And I highly encourage you to check them out. It's legit. Okay, so what is rope flow? Rope flow is essentially jumping rope without jumping. It uses a slightly heavier rope. You can see two examples here. This is a rope flow rope. It's kind of like any rope, a lot of climbing ropes are like this, but in general, it's a rope that has knots on each end. Some of them are thinner like this, other ones are thicker. This one is heavier and spins slower. This one is lighter and spins faster. Both have their benefits. And the focus is using the rope to create different movement patterns, swinging the rope around, 
learning new tricks and styles, and getting into a flow where you sort of lose track of time and really it feels like a bit of a combination between dancing and exercising and martial arts maybe and a little bit of jump rope. It's a bunch of different modalities that really get you in touch with your body and you're moving in unique ways that you probably would not move if you were just lifting weights at a gym. I've been doing this for about a month now and I will play some footage of what it looks like for me while I share some of the pros and cons that I found about this exercise movement modality. Before the pandemic, I had a very complicated three-day split where I was going to the gym six days a week, working out certain muscle groups, and I really had to be at a gym in order to do that process. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances in March of 2020, the gym shut down for several months. That meant that I couldn't go do the thing that helped me stay fit, helped me stay focused and in shape and continue that routine. When that connection or that habit, that system broke down, I had a really hard time continuing something that was a very strong habit in a different way. One of the things I really love about rope flow is that it is just a rope. You can get one of the fancy ones like I have from Slush Ropes, or you can use just about any rope. You want something somewhat thicker than maybe a standard light rope, but a climbing rope or anything, you can just knot the ends and make your own. So there are a lot of different ways to access the tool and it's very hard for that to be taken away from you. You can do it in a ton of different locations. You can do it outside. You can do it inside if you have enough space. It's very mobility focused. And so you're really like moving a lot. It's not just one or two muscle groups, but you're working out your entire upper body and even your lower body if you do it in certain ways. Rope flow is super low impact. It doesn't hurt my knees. I'm not jumping around a ton. You can incorporate jumps, but you definitely do not have to. One of the things I love most about it so far is that it is incredibly creative and fun. It really does feel like you're just playing with the rope. You're swinging it around, creating new moves, combining moves, and you can even learn to scale up and do more and more complicated things as you go. In that sense, it's very easy to learn, but difficult to master. You can get really crazy with the combinations that you can do and all that kind of stuff. It gets pretty wild if you look at some of these other people doing rope flow videos. The equipment is very accessible and you can pretty much take it with you everywhere. It's just a rope. I'm gonna be taking it with me while traveling and uh, it's hard to beat that, honestly. It doesn't weigh a lot like a weight would and it creates its own weight using air resistance and the momentum of the rope swinging around. It's pretty great. There are only a few downsides. One, you're not necessarily going to get the same type of workout as you would if you were lifting big heavy weights or if you were jogging. I'm sure there are some benefits to running or those other slightly higher impact types of exercises. You also probably will get some blisters when you're first starting out if you don't pace yourself very, very slowly to kind of develop whatever you need to develop on your hands. I noticed that some of the ropes would just rub on my thumb right there and other places. So that's something that you can kind of look out for. You definitely need space. So you're swinging a somewhat heavy rope around and it's very easy to hit stuff and it's probably easier to do outside. But if you can create a big enough space inside, you can definitely do that too. It's just something to be careful with. While I said that it's easy to begin and difficult to master, it definitely takes a bunch of sessions to start building up the flow and the speed and the movement to get it to feel natural. It took me about a month probably, just until the last week or so, to get to a place where I could really move the rope around like this that you see here in the video, combining different moves without thinking too much and having it feel more organic. There's definitely a learning curve again, but that's part of the fun. It's really fun seeing how you can just build the neural pathways for your body to just connect these movements and make it happen. So in a way it's a con, in a way it's, it's also one of the pros. So rope flow is definitely something that I'm very happy I discovered. I actually found it on Instagram through slush ropes, the type of rope that I ended up getting. 
and I have been having a lot of fun with it. I'm really excited to continue exploring and just sort of do it a couple times a week and see what I can create with it, see how it does. I will tell you that it is definitely a very good cardio workout. As you can see here, it gets your heart going. Uh, the more you're dancing around and moving, it really does create a very effective cardio workout. So it looks like you're kind of just swinging this rope around, but in effect, it really does give you quite a good workout. On the flip side, you can move very slowly and really focus on precision in the way you're moving the rope around you, the way that you're curating your movements and practicing, and it can become more of like a Tai Chi type of movement flow, which has its benefits too. It can really bring you in touch with the body, really make you feel connected to your body and feeling what you're feeling and just moving around. And I don't know, I find that, that part of it really nice too. So I'm really curious what you think about this and what you've been doing to explore new movement modalities or how you are taking care of yourself and what sort of things you're exploring because I would love to know other things that I can explore and then eventually make some videos about and continue on from there. Thanks so much for your attention. I hope you found this interesting and enjoyable. If you did, make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel here on YouTube. And uh, man, yeah, we'll see you soon.